Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Well, today we've traveled to uh, the Wisconsin Dells, or as it was called during the Civil War, Kilbourne City, and we're joined by Dave Rambo, and he's our host here today. Dave, thanks for having us, and tell me where I am. We're at ground zero of this H.H. H. Bennett studio. This is where the magic happened, right here. Great, and H.H. H. Bennett is the reason we're here today. Tell me a little bit about who Henry Bennett is. Henry Bennett was a Civil War veteran, and um, he had lived here prior to the war, enlisted with the 12th Wisconsin Infantry. Great. Well, you work with the Wisconsin Historical Society. They've got his diaries. I got a chance to search those. There's some really fun stories. Henry Bennett talks about being in a battle outside of the Battle of Vicksburg, and you should hear the words that yeah. he tells us. Sunday, June 7th. We had a fight last night, and a terrible one, too. It was lasting from sunset till the raising thereof. The enemy made repeated attacks on us and each time was repelled with heavy loss. Many of us were sorely wounded, but none killed. I have even now the marks upon me of that midnight combat. I forgot to say that it was mosquitoes we fought with. Well, we know Henry Bennett also spent time in Vicksburg and as those combats change, he's going to talk a little bit more seriously about it. Friday, June 12th. We've got in from Pickett all safe, but some of us had some close calls from rebel bullets. This is a little different kind of picket from what we ever done before. We go out into rifle pits close under the rebel fortifications and keep up a lively firing all the time. Some of the boys shot away as high as 100 rounds. The rebel sharpshooters answered us, but we kept them away from their big guns. Talk to me about this veteran's experiences after the war. 1864, he was wounded in the right hand, so he couldn't do his carpentry anymore. He came back here after the war and purchased a wet, a wet plate, uh, a tin type gallery as it was called, and started doing his own photography business. Coming back from any war, you have to change from being under constant stress to back to the way it was before you were under constant stress. Um, today, we call that post-traumatic stress disorder. In those days, um, many civilians and soldiers often called it soldier's heart, or melancholia. It seems Mr. Bennett was a victim of that because he went through um, prolonged times where he was depressed. Um, they called it at that time the Bennett Blues within his family. And Dave, talk with me a little bit about how Bennett handled the melancholy or the Bennett Blues. Mm -hmm. um, without getting into any, you know, drinking or anything like that, he seemed to delve into his work. Um, one of the things he loved to do would be to ramble and travel up and down the Wisconsin River and photograph the natural resource that we have around us here. And what did he do with those photographs? Okay, those photographs, the bulk of them, he uh, photographed and made into what they called stereo views, which are cards with double images. If viewed through the proper type of viewer, would look three-dimensional. Well, as I know, the wet plate and tintype industry is a little bit of a family avocation for Henry right. Bennett. Talk to me a little bit there. He had um, early on learned about photography from an uncle named um, George Houghton. So he already kind of had the chemistry in his blood. He knew what to do. Great. And talk to me about this site. This site that we're in is the original studio that was built for Mr. Bennett in 1875. Well, why was this built in 1875? Um, he had a previous gallery which was way too small. This expansive area would give you a lot of room to do your work, and the lot was available. There had been a fire here in town about a year earlier. What role do his photos have in Kilbourne City and in the Wisconsin okay. Dells? For good or for bad, it brought all the people here. I think it's a good thing because um, before that time this was a lumbering and a railroad town and he brought through his work attention of the entire country and in some cases the world to this area as a natural resource and a wonder that people wanted to come and experience as tourists. 
Well, we're back in Henry Bennett's studio, and assistant director here, Jenna Loda, has joined us because one of the characters in Henry's life has become particularly interesting to her. Tell me a little bit about Frankie. Well, Frankie Bennett uh, was originally called Frankie Dowdy. She moved here with her family in um, 1857 and um, proceeded to live life here. And she certainly caught the eye of our Henry Bennett. She too was a photographer and they moved forward in their life and in their business as kind of one unit. So talk with me, when did they get married? Uh, so they got married um, in 1867 um, on a cold January day. She was kind of in a family way, as it's sometimes called, of about six months. Um, and so they proceeded to have a baby not long after they got married. Now we know with Henry's story, as we've been talking with Dave, there was often times when he would ramble or go shoot nature or shoot yes. the Dells. That leaves this studio without him. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about Frankie's role here. Absolutely. So it wasn't just here in this uh, historic studio built in 1875. They were working elsewhere as well prior to this building being built. But she was still kind of running the show, as it were, while he was off in nature or traveling around the country promoting this area and his photography. Um, and so she was uh, not only running the business, as it were, the day-to-day -day needs, uh, running the shop and the store, um, but she was actually taking uh, photographs as well. Great, and talk to me more about the rest of her life. How long does she live? Well, unfortunately, she died at a very young age, even considering the time period of the late 1800s. She died in um, 1884 at the fairly young age of only 36. She had some respiratory issues, which was known. Now, of course, Bennett was worried that it was actually some of this chemistry that she was working with so frequently. Um, we don't know that that's necessarily true. And talk to me about how Henry responded to her death. He fell into a pretty significant depression, and um, it was very difficult for him. He had fairly young children. His kids were, you know, teenagers, essentially. So he had those responsibilities as well. What is he to do? Um, so it was very difficult and very challenging for him. And talk to me just as we end Frankie's story about how Henry comes out in his the beginning of his next marriage. Yes, so about six years after uh, Frankie passed on, uh, he catches the eye of Miss Evelyn, or Eveline, depending on who you ask, uh, Eva uh, Marshall. Um, she's a little bit younger than him, about 20 years indeed younger than him. Um, and they proceed to get married and have a couple more children. Uh, they have two daughters together. So he had a total of five children. Talk to me about the later period and the end of Henry Bennett's life. Okay. Um, photography, as he knew it when he entered the field, had changed dramatically. Um, when he started, we were still in the Civil War time period of photography where you're making your own film with liquid chemicals and developing them in the field. Photography in the mid-1880s turned to what we call dry plate which was much easier to work with. You didn't have to have your own dark room carrying with you everywhere. And he was able to work with that and with some different faster shutters that he tinkered and developed to um, actually really make better photographs of different types of vantage points and show motion in photos and such. Great. Well, that's pretty much the one that caught my eye today when we were looking at the museum that's here with the H.H. H. Bennett really? Studio. Talk to me about that jump photo. He had his young son, Ashley, who was 17. You know when you're 17, you think you're immortal? Well, Ashley must have thought that because he had him jump a chasm from a cliff line to a toadstool pillar, about a five and a half to six foot chasm in the middle. And he intended to have him captured suspended between the two. Turned out Ashley leapt, the shutter was tripped a little too fast, and by the time he got it just the way he wanted it, Bennett had had Ashley leap that 14 times back and forth. Wow, looking at that photo, that kid's just got guts. Yeah. And you think about the technology of it, things that we consider as photographers today, second nature, let's do sports photography, let's do fast photography, let's use a high shutter rate and this fellow's cobbling together a shutter on the front of a camera to do it. Yeah. It's just amazing. Using rubber bands to trigger the shutter. Yeah, wow. So it was amazing. Let's put a button on it. Talk to me, where's Bennett for you and what's okay. important to him? How does he connect you with the Civil War? Okay. 
I'm kind of living the dream, if that's a true thing. Because, you know, you get so involved in the Civil War, reenacting, the other things with reenacting, such as my photography, and taking that hobby and turning it into an avocation is a rare thing, in my world anyway. And um, the first time I walked into this space, I know why you wanted to be here, because this is like magic UV light. You can't take a bad photograph in this room. It's just amazing. And have you had a chance to photograph images here? What we're doing this year is we've started a new program. We're calling it the Tintype Experience. And um, people can book a session online through the Wisconsin Historical Society website and come in here, go through and learn what it would be like to be seated in a studio in the 1870s or 80s and all the experiences you have getting your tintype made. Wow, and 1870s and 80s, how does this space sit compared to your knowledge with 30 years of wet plate to what it would be in the 1860s? Not too much different at all. I mean, you need this UV bank of lights, um, the camera in a very bare sort of chair and a backdrop. And as the years went on, things got a little more cluttered, but in the early years, it was pretty Spartan. Great. Well, Dave, thank you for welcoming us to your site, and thanks for letting us be here and for sharing Henry's story with us and with everybody in our audience. Thank you for being with us at Civil War Digital Digest and taking this journey to the Wisconsin Dells, or as we'll call it in the Civil War world, Kilborn City. We hope you enjoyed the time meeting Henry Bennett and his family. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.